Hello and welcome back everyone to this live session on SAP UI5 Flexible Programming Model Training with me Anubhav, live on YouTube. In the last episode, we talked about the concept of adding a new spiral chart and also working with field controls along with the field side effects. In our today's session, we are going to begin with introduction of adding a custom object page. We will add a custom section in our object page and then add our table building block which is currently being added on the main page from there to our custom building block. So a custom building block is nothing but a fragment which is integrated with our existing UI5 application in the inside an object page. I'm sure you all have a good idea of SAP UI5 basics. If not, then I would request you to please subscribe our course on SAP UI5 and Fury Fundamentals where we covered all the core topics on UI5 in detail. Just a quick idea, a fragment is nothing but lightweight UI parts which are used to design modular UIs. They will not have their own controller but they will rely on the controller of the host view. However, we can add a custom JS file where we can write the corresponding logic related to our controller, related to our fragment. So we are going to see that in today's class. So let's begin our session. So I'm going to switch over as usual to our business application studio tool. And our current application look like this, where we have added the side effects for the fields. We have added an itinerary section. And now I would like to get rid of this itinerary section, which was created through annotation. But I would like to add a completely new custom section. So let's go ahead and do that for this. Uh, I, instead of this itinerary, we are going to add another itinerary as a custom section. So I'm going to switch over back to the application in Bash tool and open the page page map. <coughs> and we edit our page map. <coughs> and the very first thing which I will do is delete this existing object which has been added earlier. So you can see this is our table control which we have added through the annotation earlier. I can also open the existing annotation. This is the annotation which was done for this section. So we'll delete this now and we will add our custom section over here. So I'll delete this. And now of course as a result of this, the block or the tab, the, the, the facet will get deleted from the output as well. So the UI will refresh now automatically because we have the live loader module which will refresh the UI and you see the block is gone. So let's add a custom section. So I'm going to come back to section, click on plus, add a custom section over here. And this could be a good idea that in case you are want to extend a standard Fury application where you would like to add your custom section, you would be able to do the same way. So this is a good example of how extensibility work with flexible programming model on SAP UI5. So I'm going to add now an itinerary section. Once again, let's provide the translation for IET9 text. We will create a new fragment and let's give the new fragment name as a custom section. Very nice. Where do we want to add it? We want to add it right after the travel block, after, not before. And we would like to also add an event handler, basically a controller. So till now the basics taught you that a fragment doesn't have a controller, but now we will be able to add even a JavaScript block or a controller for the same. So click on add button. And you can see it's been added. As a result, when our UI load, we will see a empty custom block. So I'm just going to go back. The generated code would include, I guess, a button. Yes, there you go. So it has added the section and there is just a simple button with the event handler. So what happens as a result, if you check the manifest JSON file, the generated code, let me explore and show you what it does behind the scene. It basically add a, a new custom section as part of our manifest. You can see here a new uh, custom section was added. Yes, content with a custom section with the name custom section and it's been added over here right after the travel block. It's a XML fragment type. If you want to change the label or the positioning, you'd be able to do that quite easily by coming to the manifest JSON. Perfect. 
So this is how exactly we look at the the generated object or generated code. And actually this object is now created under a fragment folder under the extension folder with the name custom section. So let's go back on the folder structure under extension fragment. You can see the fragment is created. Fantastic. And this is the button which was also added with a little bit of controller. The controller exists here itself. You see this is the controller where we have also written the button code. Very nice. Very nice. So now we can start adding some controls to this. So let me start a, adding a vertical box. V box control and we can also just attach this existing handler to this vertical box exact annotation. Uh, we can add this property and and my vertical box. So this is the setup what we got and now as part of this setup we are going to first add a message strip. So let me see. Yeah, sometime code completion doesn't work in the bash tool as you can see here already. It's not working. <clears throat> Never mind. We can just add a message strip control. And in this message strip, we can just add a small message. Uh, I can say text. All the bookings for the travel ID and I can put a placeholder parameter with the, my travel ID for the relative path has been confirmed. Just a message strip I will add with the show icon property as true and we can just have this message strip. Next to this I'm going to add our block. So let's add a layout grid because we will add a grid with horizontal spacing. as one a bit of spacing and we will say container query is equals to true so that whatever you add inside this can be queried and then we will add the, end of the layout grid the layout grid will contain then a um a content aggregation so that's the content aggregation we will add if you don't know what is aggregation concept, what is aggregation binding, please think of joining our basic UI5 training because we covered all these topics there. And now it's time to bring our table with the macro namespace. So we choose macros and we're going to choose the table building block and I'll say meta path to get the path. So if you remember, there is a code already in the annotation for our table control which was uh, which was there earlier so the same path we are going to add over here uh, for getting our booking table so if you come down uh, you already had we already earlier had that code got deleted now but we already had a code which was pointing to the booking entity for fetching the corresponding data so that we can add here as part of the meta path. So let's add that meta path to booking, which is the association name slash add the read UI line item annotation. And we can actually go back and check the annotation in annotation dot TDS file for the booking entity. Let me just check it's here. You see, this is the name. This is the exact name for booking to create the booking table. We're going to bring that over here and attach attach that over here for this entity. So we are going to put the complete annotation path over here. Fantastic. So that attaches to the, the building block for table. Let's give an ID booking table. And we are good to go. I will be sharing this complete source code with all of you as part of the study material, which you can find in the description of current video. If you've forgotten to attend the previous episodes, kindly also check the I button where you can find the episodes which you missed already in these live sessions. All right, so now we are good. Let's go back and switch over to the application. And we should see something should pop up now. Application still starting. If there's a problem, then you can press F12 and check the console that if there are any errors, we will be able to find those errors also. So there is some problem already. Maybe I just need to 
click here so I think there is a problem related to this at the rate we should not use it maybe I just save it again for my custom section the application is rebooting now so as you can see it's not working it's time for troubleshooting let's go back oh yes you see the grid which we have used from the layout namespace we didn't define the namespace correctly in my fragment yeah that was my bad so we should keep at the rate but let's define the XML namespace for layout SAP UI layout library console is my best friend who will inform me for any issues which come so it's not about just building but also making sure that uh, when there is an issue how do you troubleshoot and fix the issue that's a real developer that's a real champion yeah so I'm gonna come back oops it's not popping up my section in fact it's popping up itinerary section but you see there's an error and this is certainly the error because of the annotation which we added I can make out system will show you a trace also you can clearly see so I think we missed uh, we need to remove this uh, at the read yes so I think that's the the catch let me just remove that go back so live loader is going to do its job it's going to restart my application after I do a code change to the file it will reboot our application so we saw two issues which uh, I try to resolve and there you go it's still it's not working there's something else which we are missing on the so this is certainly another mistake you can see there is extra space so usually when you attach an uh, annotation it should never contain a space so that's perhaps the issue let's try it out I'm going to remove that space and save so multiple issues we found and we are trying to solve these issues as well and I'm going to switch over back to my application which is going to live load now so once it loading let's come back to itinerary and voila there you go there you go the custom building block is appearing now beautiful we can just go back and try to add it so let me also try to allow navigation now so at the moment you see when I click here there is no navigation it's just popping up wow Anubo. so we need to also adapt that let's go back to the controller and instead of wow Anubo, we are really going to do something interesting we are going to get the binding context from the view and based on the binding context I'm going to use the routing to route to the view so that we can also load the navigation for the second screen that's very very important yes so let's go ahead and do that we can get the binding context var o context equals to o event dot get source dot get binding context yes so once we get the binding context we can use our router to navigate this dot routing dot navigate to the boundary context so that when you click on the tile you will also be able to navigate so this source code along with the other source code I will be sharing with all of you so I'm just going to go back and we've got this fragment code also I'll be sharing with both of you uh, both of these content with you so you guys can also explore and check it out let's come back to the UI and it's time to click watch out there you go it's navigating to 1409 nice and we got the data now the next thing I want to do testing so let's show more details and now we've got the details we can edit and now of course I go back and change the price so when I change the price here 2630 I would like to see this change reflect on my tile a side effect concept which you taught in the previous class let me make it 30,000 and you see it's changing 6333 Wow why is that happening that's happening because of the side effect which we added in our field control so you can see here we have, we have added here a side effect for the travel entity and whenever there is a change in the in the data yes it is automatically going to change the output so you can see uh, whenever there is a change in the booking fees or in the booking entity please update the total price so that we've already taken care into the account
Cool. So that is how exactly the side effect can also work together in conjunction with the data set. So if you reduce it to 1020, enter, you can see it's changing immediately. So that is how we can improve the experience for our end user when we build an application end to end using the flexible programming model with the help of cloud application programming model annotation. So I hope you enjoyed this episode today with us on anubautrainings.com. Please like, share, subscribe this video so that I can get more content like you, like this kind of live series on YouTube. It's one of its unique offering. Thank you so much once again. Catch you up in the next episode and goodbye.